Hello again guys, it's uh, Shane Kennedy here from Slow Dogs of Therapy and Mackie again, your cheeky chappy, good boy. Um, so what, one thing I wanted to talk to you about today is I mentioned in our last video about there's no such thing as a bomb proof dog and uh, you know every dog has the ability to, to bite if needs be but also every dog has the <laughs> Yes. Okay. Good boy. One second. Good boy. Oh. Sit. Down. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good lad. So every doggy has this natural range of um, behaviour. Remember a few videos ago we talked about not fight or flight. It's absolutely natural. Good boy. And I wanted to tell you what that means because it means that dogs will try and avoid as much as they can. And this is very important if training your dog, especially for therapy. If you're you know, it's not just about being able to take loads of uh, hugs and kisses or giving them out. It's actually being able to read your dog. You know, sometimes I'm not just looking at the dog for in therapy. I'm looking at a handler as well. You know, you have to be switched on. You're there looking at your dog at all times, making sure they're okay, making sure they're happy. Uh, and, re you know, like I said, reading signs. Okay, good boy. Good, boy. good, boy. good lad. So there are, as I was taught, five stages of up to a potential bite with aggression and people might have learned differently and that's absolutely fine uh, it's just different flavors so the first stage is dogs not happy and you'll see it in their facial characteristics like Mackie's he's happy he's, he's, uh, he's a bit warm but he's also relaxed he's kind of smiling the jaws open it's relaxed when a dog's like this yeah they're getting tense they do it in the eyes as well, you know, they're giving it all the, that in the eyes, okay? Um, and sometimes you'll, they might even show a whale eye. There's a meme going around or a photo of a baby pulling, it's a golden retriever, I think, and she's kind of got the jowl like this. And it's absolute disgrace because the dog is showing all signs he does not like this. Yeah, he's trying to turn away. Good boy, he hasn't actually bit. Because if someone did that to me, I might stick the sweet on you. Um, you know, if I, if I if I just went up and like started checking out your feet, or you know, lifting up your tail to see, oh, isn't it a bushy tail? You might call for a constable, and rightly so. So when dogs do it, they're trying to avoid. I don't I don't like this. I, don't, I you know, I'm, and they're tolerating it. Yeah, it doesn't mean they're going to bite, but they're, they'll tolerate it for a bit. But ideally, you remove them from the situation. Isn't that right, son? Uh, happened yesterday, didn't it, mate? Eleven month dog mastiff, very nice very nice dog uh on a, a harness with an extendable lead owner was very nice met in the park but had very little control over this dog who kept lunging at Mackie, pushing underneath him trying to sniff his bits Mackie was all right but it, i've heard about this dog from my wife who's walked the dog and um she said you know Mackie sometimes is a bit like <clears throat> and i was like okay so it's actually quite understandable to see the, dog, the Mackie's trying to retreat. He's on the lead. He's trying to back off. Dogs keeps pushing forwards, and the owner can't really do anything about it. So at one point, I just said, you know, Poochie's getting a bit pushy there. You might want to just pull him back, and he was fine. Got Mackie into a sit. He did. He laid down. <laughs> and he, there you go. Chilled out. Happy days. So that's the first stage. Is kind of like facial expressions. Uh, trying to avoid that sort of thing. Hello. Give him a beep. Mackie boy. Good boy. The second one is when they start to do things like growling. You know, they, they start to show teeth. They're, they're trying to show you, number one, they have weapons, but also before they bite, they pull their, their lips back so they don't bite their lips as well. All right. And this is all just what I've been taught. Yeah. If, if you've been told differently, then you know, don't freak out. Good boy. And... So that's like stage number two. So what they're saying at this stage is, I'm really not enjoying this. I hate this. In fact, I'm not really wish you would stop doing what you're doing. And stage number three is when you get things like an air snap. They'll kind of like that. And that's, they don't make contact. And it's very, very controlled. Dogs have incredible control over their jaws. And an air snap is an air snap. This is what I get people say, oh no, he just missed me. If I hadn't pulled up just in time, he would have bit me. I don't think so, no. Even the oldest geriatric dog is really, really quick. It's quicker than Usain Bolt. If he wanted to bite you and break skin, he would have done. Okay, um, so it was a warning. Stage three, warning. 
And that, if you're still engaging with whatever behavior is with this dog, you're an idiot. And then stage four is, again, as I learned it, was the, um, good boy, let's chill out, is the, they're gonna bite and not break contact. So with sometimes if you've had an animal bite, etc., or you know your own dog has bit you, a behavioralist might actually ask a pertinent question, how many puncture wounds is there? Did they break the skin? Is there sideways laceration? All of that is actually very important because you know how much pressure a dog puts on actually reflects their intention. So that's why learning uh, bite inhibition is if you read anything by Ian Dunbar, it's kind of right up there and it is absolutely true. Bite inhibition is one of the, probably the most important things to teach your dog. Uh, soft mouth, absolutely. You're not really teaching them to not bite because, or you don't punish a dog if they're showing some signs of aggression. You know, if a dog kind of like growls at something, what is it that's, what is it in this situation that's, you know, does he need to, some training, socialization, counter conditioning? Uh, or is it actually reasonable that he's saying, listen, I don't like this. Fair enough, you know, we all have bad days. To punish a dog for showing any of these signs is not a good idea. It's not a good idea because you remove these stages. Um, they go from like 0 to 60 very quick because you've punished them for showing them. So where, where are we up to? We're up to, uh, uh, we're, they bite and they don't actually, so they make contact. Good, good boy but they don't try and break the skin. He's literally telling you, I'm a bashu. And then obviously five, if you're still engaging with this behavior, they may actually start to uh, bite down at stage five and actually try and uh, puncture the skin. Um, so as you can see, five stages, there's an awful lot of warning signs there to understand with your dog. Um, number one is look at the facial expressions. Look how stiff they are. Look at that. Is he relaxed? Like your boy, you're sniffing, you're chilled. Yeah, you're chilled. Good boy, yeah, good boy. Um, uh, he will talk to me through his own body, oh, that's nice, through his own body language as we go. And if I'm in a therapy session, um, there might be someone who's just, you know, obviously I've, I've done my best to socialize them in all different types of situations. Um, but, you know, I will read the body language of my dogs. And sometimes I've gone, hmm, I'm just gonna bring my dog out of that situation. A big part of what we do when we're going into schools is teaching children, especially young children, how to safely approach a dog. We'll teach this so they can actually start to read dog signs. You know, it's just, commun it's just communication. Isn't that right, boy? Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, get that right there. Oh, see, he likes that. Not because he's thinking, I care about your internal balance, old geezer, but he likes getting cuddles because they're really pleasant. And it's a shared experience and we connect. Good boy, eh? People do think because they're therapy dogs that they can actually take liberties with them or they're highly trained so you can do what you like to them. You can't, not really. These, you know, these are big dogs, they're powerful dogs and they're independent thinking, you know, they're sentient. So you can't just go up to a dog, lift up its tail because it's huge and bushy and go, look at that, isn't it enormous? Because the dog's gonna turn around very quickly and go, what was that? Okay, um, naturally so. And if it's a young child, they're gonna go flying like a cartwheeling spider, okay? Not good, and then the dog gets the blame because he just knocked the child down. Didn't mean to, or even sometimes, you know, accidents will happen. Uh, sometimes you might accidentally have a family member accidentally stand on the dog's tail in the kitchen if he's under your feet or anything like that. The, in the absolute instinctual reaction is to go like that. Absolutely, you know, and you can't really say that that's unreasonable, but it's when they do and they don't bite or they did and they, it's just a touch. So actually that's really good bite inhibition. That's a good, that's a good dog. Ian Dunbar tells a story on one of his seminars where there was a rescue dog and he says, people go up to a dog to try and, and they give a treat. And as soon as the dog's had the treat, the hand's still there. It's like, Ugh. so he said, you need the dog to come to you. And he said, this dog was, um, he got bit by this dog and he learned this lesson. Uh, he went up and gave, and the dog took the treat and went, Hah. But the, the dog was, was absolutely, it was a soft mouth. And he says, oh, you're a very good dog, very good bite inhibition. You can come home with me. <laughs> All right. So there you go, guys. He's... So from Mackie and me, thanks for listening. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers, guys.